On this planet, there are plenty of predator-prey relationships. These are not always as one-sided as they may seem, as many prey animals have come up with ingenious ways of defending themselves. Some use brute strength, and others use poison and venom. Venom is usually administered through a bite or a sting. Poison usually becomes effective when it's ingested, or when it gets in the bloodstream. Although these protections often prove very effective, they don't always work. Some animals such as king cobras have become immune to snake venoms, and some intelligent animals such as the rakali have learned to only safe parts of poisonous animals, such as this cane toad. Some toxic and venomous creatures display aposomatic coloration, which is where they are usually brightly coloured, to warn predators not to eat them. This is most commonly seen in dart frogs, but there are many other examples. In this video I will be focusing on some of the world's secretly poisonous animals, as I'll be going through five disturbingly toxic animals. And for our first species we'll be heading off to New Guinea, as we have the hooded pitahui. Now this bird is a member of the Old World Oriole family, and is mostly found in rainforests, as well as areas areas of mangrove forest. In these areas it has a varied diet, feasting on a variety of fruits, seeds and invertebrates. On this diet they can reach a respectable size of around 23 centimetres, but although this size is somewhat impressive, they can still be a target for some predators. Although the hooded pitahui may look like many other birds in its area, it's hiding a deadly secret. Its orange and black feathers are laced with poison, and it's really not a bird to be messed with. This bird carries a toxin called BTX, and these poisons are a sort of natural drug. Touching this bird can make you feel like your hands are on fire, and eating one of these birds can even lead to death. BTX stops your sodium channels from working, which can lead to paralysis and even death. This poison helps to deter predators, and even protect the bird from parasites. But how did the hooded pitahui get its toxicity? Well for the answer, all we need to do is move over to South America and look at the many species of dart frog. These dart frogs are also very toxic, and one of the many toxins that they have is BTX. This is the same toxin as the hooded pitahui, and they get their toxin in the same way. Both of these creatures feed on various species of beetle, some of which are toxic. The hooded pitahui and the dart frogs are both immune to this toxin, and actually absorb it to make themselves toxic. The hooded pitahui is only one of a few toxic birds, but another rare toxic bird can also be found in New Guinea, and is thought to get its toxicity in the same way. So although it may look like many other birds in its area, this bird is secretly toxic. But for our next species we'll be heading to North America, as we have the rough skinned newt. Now this species can be found in the Pacific Northwest, and are usually found in damp environments, normally around lakes and streams. Of course this species got its name because of its rough bumpy skin, but they are often confused with the California newt. There are subtle ways to tell these species apart, and of course one is far more toxic than the other. As this newt is relatively small, it could be an easy meal for many predators in the area, but when they are approached by a would-be predator, they display their brightly coloured underside, which is a warning to show that they're toxic. Many newts produce toxins from their skin glands, but the rough skinned newt is particularly potent. If you handle them you can experience skin irritation, but if for some reason you decide to eat one, it could be the last meal you'll ever have. This newt produces tetrodotoxin, which is the same toxin that's found in some puffer fish. This toxin is again a sodium channel blocker, and this can lead to paralysis, and eventually death by asphyxiation. In 1979, a 29 year old man was dared to eat a rough skinned newt, and in his drunken state he decided it was a good idea. He told his friends that he thought he was going to die, and his heart gave out 15 minutes later. So this just goes to show how deadly these newts can be. Despite this, some of its predators have showed a resilience to this toxin, such as the common garter snake. Some have been known to target this newt, and have still lived to tell the tale. So although its poison is potentially fatal, the garter snakes have evolved to handle it. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to East Asia, as we have the tiger keelback. Now many people confuse poisonous animals with venomous animals. Plenty of snake species are venomous, but very few are poisonous. The tiger keelback, on the other hand, is not only venomous, but it is also also poisonous. Very few deaths have occurred when this snake has bitten people, as it rarely tends to bite in defence, and its fangs are located at the back of its mouth. Instead, when these snakes are approached by predators, they arch their necks to display the nuchal gland area, and this is where its toxins are stored. If a predator was to bite this area, they would get sprayed with the toxin either in their mouths or their faces, and this can have deadly consequences. Its toxin aggravates airways, and also affects heart muscle. This can be potentially fatal, but it all depends on the snake. Each tiger keel back has a different toxicity, as once again they get their toxins from their prey. They mostly feed on amphibians, and some ingest poisonous toads. They absorb the toxins from these toads, and then use it against would-be predators. In areas with no poisonous toads, these snakes are generally not toxic, and don't display their trademark defensive behaviour. So although these snakes have the potential to be very toxic, it once again all depends on their diet. But for our next species, we'll be heading to all oceans worldwide, as we have the Hawksbill sea turtle. Now this turtle is one of the seven sea turtles 
channels around the world and is one of the easiest to identify as I've been through many times on this channel. It got its name because of its hawk-like bill and this bill is in fact a very useful adaptation. They generally feed on algae, jellyfish and crustaceans but in most cases the majority of their diet is made up by sea sponges. These can often be very hard to get at and their beaks help them get into nooks and crannies. Like some of the other sea turtle species, the hawksbill sea turtle is listed as critically endangered. This is mainly due down to loss of nesting grounds but in some areas they are also hunted. It is illegal to hunt them in most countries around the world but in some countries they are eaten as delicacies. Their shells are also some of the most beautiful turtle shells and are used to make many expensive items. But if you were evil enough to poach one of these sea turtles you might be in with a nasty surprise. Some of the sponges that this turtle feeds on are in fact toxic. Their body fat helps them to store these toxins which prevents them from turning ill but as these toxins are stored in its meat it's potentially poisonous if eaten. If you were to get food poisoning from a toxic turtle you can expect nausea, diarrhea, necrosis of the liver and in some cases death. From 1840 to 1983, 89 deaths from turtle poisoning were recorded and as many of these cases go undiagnosed, this number of deaths could be way higher. You may think this toxicity would discourage would-be hunters but in many cases it does not. For that reason they need our help and I've left the donation link down in the description below. So although this reptile has some secret poison, it doesn't put off evil poachers. Before our next species we'll be heading over to Eurasia as we have the Spanish fly. Despite its confusing name, this insect is not a fly and is in fact an emerald green beetle. They are in the blister beetle family which is a fitting name for a group of toxic insects. These insects are relatively small and primarily feed on the leaves of ash, lilac and honeysuckle. Although these beetles may look rather ordinary they are carrying a very powerful toxin. These beetles create a colourless fatty substance known as cantharidin. In small doses it acts like a burning agent and prolonged exposure can lead to severe chemical burns. But if this beetle is for some reason ingested its toxins become even more deadly. It can lead to severe gas gastrointestinal bleeding and even renal dysfunction and organ failure. This in some cases can lead to death. But this toxin has also been used in other strange ways. In some cases cantharidin has been used as an aphrodisiac as its poisons can leave you with and I quote aggressively persistent erections. This is usually as a result of severe inflammation and is extremely dangerous so if anyone offers you a Spanish fly aphrodisiac it's best not to take it. There is one creature that deserves to be on this list but I haven't included and that is of course the fugu pufferfish. These fish are some of the most toxic creatures in the world yet they're still eaten as a delicacy across Japan. I have featured this fish in many other videos before which is why it doesn't have a place in this video but when it comes to toxic creatures the fugu pufferfish is one of the most powerful creatures out there. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any other creatures that could make it on this list then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time goodbye.